me being from Texas, not really proud of my uh, state at the moment because we got some things going on that we need to get sorted out. Hey guys, this is Travis Cronin, Entertainment Director at Us Weekly, and you are watching Drag Us Weekly, the show where we drag the truths, the wish, the wants, the fears out of your favorite drag queens. Today we are joined by the legendary Capital L Caps Lock, Carrie Colby. Hello. Hello, my angel. How are you doing? Are you feeling the trantasy? I am feeling the trantasy. Sign me up for Mama's Boot Camp. She is turning out some hot yes. ladies. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Carrie, well, we're just going to get into your amazing time on the show and what a glamazon you were. You were so incredible. It looked like you belonged there. Did it feel like you were finally getting seen and had the stage to do drag that you've always deserved? Absolutely. I mean, honestly, this is a, it's, it's a dream come true. I've always, from when I first really had like my encounter with, um, anything to do with queer culture, really, I was um, introduced to Drag Race season five and I was in Dallas at the time. So it was like from that moment on, I was like, I want to do that. I would love to do that. There's no way I could, but I'd love to. And then, um, you know, fast forward a couple of quick little years and here I am just on the show. How, what were you most proud at watching it back? You had so many great moments, but you personally, what would you feel most proud of yourself? Yeah, I would say the, the moment I was most proud of was um, the untuck that we that we witnessed last week with, you know, our beautiful two new angels joining our um, now Trantastic Four. We had Miss Bosco, Miss Jasmine. I think that is something that I will take with me beyond my life here because that was just such a beautiful moment. And I think that that made a huge impact beyond me and beyond the show, I think it just made a really big impact for for all the girls that are out there watching and, and even the trans boys that look to see inspiration and a voice. And that that to me was just, it was everything. And what what challenge do you, what runway are you most proud of? The JLo dress, you looked amazing. Is that the one or was there another runway moment that you love for you? I think for me personally, there was two. There was the JLo one because that was a dream. I've always wanted to pursue high fashion. And, you know, it's like those little fantasies as, as children. We, we dream of, you know, going to the Met Gala and wearing, you know, a closeout gown for a, for a main Versace or any house. And I think that was something that really like solidified to me that like, I can chase my dreams and I can stomp down a runway and be fierce. That's a, that's a great little, uh, little, uh, interview and, uh, introduction to a lot of fashion houses, I think. And, um, my second would be the one that we just finished. I loved this hearts on the runway, um, moment because I was able to be comfortable just being absolutely insane. And I felt like I was the devil's side side chick. I was Lilith herself. I was so spooky, but so sexy. You were so spooky and sexy and your lip sync skills we've now gotten to see. You are a performer <laughs> and a runway queen. Was that, was how, what was the moment when you were lip syncing? You were scared, but were you excited to perform? I was. Honestly, I was very excited for this number. I think as a Black trans woman, we grow up listening to our divas of soul. And uh, to be able to do Tony Braxton and be able to slay it and just be like fierce with everything about it, it really was, it was a dream come true. That was the song that I grew up in in the gay clubs with my fake ID. That dance remix was the one and you did it so, so proud. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Yeah, that, it was, that's definitely a jam for sure. That and um, the Whitney Houston, which one was that one? Uh, oh, my goodness. It's not right, but it's okay. That yes, too. the Hex Hector. The yes. Gorilla Puss. <laughs> <laughs> and Carrie, you, you are clearly going to take high fashion by storm. What is coming next for you and what do you want to do next? Well, I'm already kind of mingling my way into doing um fashion campaigns and deals which i think is amazing we're just pushing that uh exposure we're pushing that representation further 
But I think what I'm most excited for is the ability to not only showcase my aesthetic, but showcase my voice. I think especially right now with what's going on in Texas, me being from Texas, not really proud of my uh, state at the moment because we got some things going on that we need to get sorted out. But um, I think being able to now have a voice that people listen to and that um, does hold some weight, I'm really looking forward to being able to spread education, love, and positive information about our community and who we are. Yes, she's an activist too. And tell the children how they can support you, the best way to support you, where to find you. Promo yourself, girl. Tell the kids how to give you coins. Yeah. So (laughs) for me, you know, you can always uh, DM me for my Venmo. No, I'm just kidding. Um, But my Instagram link is Carrie Colby, just K-E-R-R-I-C-O-L-B-Y, honey, no spaces, no dots, no nothing. And um I, when I have projects and things coming up and I ask people to participate and share their opinions, I actually mean that shit. So I would love for people to just engage and really um, know that everything I do honestly does come from my heart, my mind, my vision, and um, let the games begin because this is just the beginning. Yes, Carrie. Thank you so much. You're such an amazing person inside and out.